Amen. Amen. Thank God for those words. Amen. 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 As we continue to thank God and praise him for such a great occasion as today. Amen. 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 What, a, what a great day it is. A happy resurrection day. Amen. 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 Commemorating again the day that Jesus came out of the tomb. The day that, that what we say is he is risen. He is Amen. He is risen. Amen. Amen. As we ready ourselves to pray, we thank God again for this great day, this great, great day of recognition, the day that we be able to look forward to because this is a day that gave new life to what we would call now the, the church because they actually hadn't came into it yet, but we, we it was life was given to it. New life was given and available for each and every person that would believe in the risen Savior. Amen. 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 So as we bow our heads, we want to continue to be thankful to God. We want to be able to intercede for our brothers and sisters. We want to continue to pray for one another. Amen. 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 Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you again for this day that you've invited us into. We thank you, Lord, for this day as we commemorate it as the risen day, the resurrection day, the day that the tomb was found to be empty. We thank you, Lord, for just, again, giving us this cognitive ability to be able to understand and know, Lord, about your word and about the life of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to strengthen us in everything that we do. We pray that your blessings will be upon your people and that you will continue to lead us and guide us where we uh, need to go. We thank you, Lord, again, for opening our eyes this morning, giving us a path to go on. And Lord, again, we just thank you, Lord, for all that you're doing for all of your people. We pray for our bereaved families. We pray for those that are lost in their sins and asking, Lord, that they would find their way to you. We thank you, Lord, for we know that you were risen not for yourself, but Lord, for us. And we just thank you for all your power and authority and strength that you that you have. We thank you, Lord, for, again, the all of the abilities that you have over our lives and all the abilities that you've given us, Lord, to be able to Live this life according to how you would have us to do it. We thank you again so much, Lord, for, again, just giving us this one more morning. We just praise you. We just magnify you for who you are. We just thank you for being God. We pray for the Connolly family. We pray for Danielle Taylor, Takeda Miles family, the Taylor family, the Tucker family, the Simmons family, Margie Scott, Charlie Williamson, uh, Sharice Miller, Tyrone, Tyrone Peter, the Williams family, uh, Donna Harrison, Renee Huntington, the Hodge family, the Mitchell family, the Young family, the Grant family, Trinity Bass, Judy Martin, Clarence Earl, Melvy Hudson, Tim Sims, Vernell, and Florence Williams, uh, Kim Taylor, James Taylor, Ella Taylor, Mary Taylor, Tony Taylor, Annie May Hayes, Mary Jefferson, Kevin Earl, Ann Green, David and Michelle Lacey, Carl and Sandra Williams, Sharon, Bates, DeAndrea Thompson, Sanaya Schuyler, Lysandra Campbell, Tanika Taylor, Pastor Samuel, and Tanya Taylor, uh, our entire church family. Lord, we just thank you again for just being God. Thank you for moving in our lives. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We thank God and again for amen. this particular day. God is good, and we continue to just thank him for all that he's doing and all that he continues to do in the lives of his people. Amen. 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 Today is such a, a great day, and we, as we participate in this day, we want to thank God <laughs> for all that he is doing. Amen. 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 Just, just the recognition of us putting the, the truth of, of Scripture on this particular day, saying that he is risen, mm -hmm. calling it Resurrection Day Amen. instead of Easter. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Hopefully, and knowing the difference. Amen. 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 So today we'll go to Matthew 28, uh, starting at the first verse. Topic we'll talk about the third day. The third day. Now, scripture says, Now, after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to look 
at the grave. And behold, a severe earthquake had occurred, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. And his appearing was like lightning, and his garment as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became like dead men. And the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen just as he said. Come and see the place where he was lying, and go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him, behold, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to report it to his disciples. And before Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take word to, the, to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they shall see me. Father, we thank you. We praise you. We thank you for your word. We ask that you would bless us, that you would bless each and every person. Give us what to say. Give us what to hear, that all may be good and pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Truly, as we begin to look at this scripture and subscribe the title again, Resurrection Day, <clears throat> talking about the, the day that it was discovered that Jesus was not in his tomb. They saw him put in the tomb, but he was no longer there. Amen? Amen. 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 It says, now after the Sabbath, so after the Sabbath was over, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the grave. They came to the grave expecting to do something, expecting to see the body there and attend to it as was uh, necessary. And verse 2 says, that behold, a severe earthquake had occurred for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled away the stone and sat upon it. So you put in the idea that the earthquake came, the earth shook as the angel came to proclaim that Jesus was not in the tomb. He, put, he rolled away the stone to show the public that which was true. Amen? Amen. Sometimes with our eyes, seeing is actually believing. But sometimes with today's time, you know that sometimes seeing is not always what you see. Amen. Amen. Because there is deception that out there to move us away from the truth. But at this particular time, there was no deception. The stone was rolled away. And the angel, in his voice, he began to tell them, do not be afraid. Amen. When he said, do not be afraid, it's already an assumption that they were afraid. Yes. The actions were taken, they were taken back, and they, were, they, they may have been trembling, they may have had other signs that, that would show that they were afraid. But the angel is proclaiming to them, basically, do not be afraid. Basically, there is no harm to come to you now. That which is happening is not about wrath, not about uh, 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 something that you should fear. It, this is actually something that you should be rejoicing about. Amen. Amen? Amen? Isn't it good to know that if Jesus says something, that it actually comes true? Amen. And at this appearing, these women will become believers. Amen. Going to the grave with the intentions of preparation is not the same thing as going to the grave expecting an empty tomb. Amen. So they weren't going expecting the empty tomb, Amen. but to their surprise, it wasn't as it seemed. For the stone had been rolled away and there was an angel Sit, uh, sitting on the stone, nice. clothed in all this white, Numbers. and and and, and y'all have to use your your 
MGM or your, your 20th Century Fox, whatever, imagination, to imagine how bright, how white this situation was. And for them to be able to see these particular things, to open their eyes, and when they see these particular things, it makes them afraid. Now you think about how easily it is for you to become afraid today. At the mere sight of things. Most of the time it's not the light that makes us afraid, it's the darkness. So when the light was here, the angel spoke and said, do not be a, a, afraid for I know that you are looking for Jesus who has been crucified. Amen? Amen. So looking back on what had just happened before the Passover and during the Passover, at just a few days before, about Jesus being marched in the city with the cross, being crowned with thorns, being pierced in the side afterwards, having been spat on, having been mocked, having been beaten, having been hung on a tree with what they say his hands or more or less his wrist nailed and his feet nailed. After seeing this and him being taken down from the cross, from the tree, knowing that he is dead. For they seen him give up his last breath. They knew that he was dead. But yet the angel is saying, you're looking for Jesus who has been crucified. Giving them news now that he is not here. Three days ago I just seen y'all put him in here. This is where he was. I know I've come to the right place. They didn't need GPS to find him in the grave. They, they already knew where it was. Amen. Amen. They, they knew they were at the right grave and as they approached and this angel will explain to them, he is not here for, he has risen, and it says, just as he said. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Just as he said. You remember when something happens? Somebody said it was going to happen, and then when it actually happened, and, and you see it happen, and you go, he said he was going to do that. But you don't actually believe it until you see it. Right? All the time that Jesus was teaching that he was going to die and on the third day he was going to rise. All this time he was teaching that. The understanding was not quite there. I don't even know if we can really grasp that today. And, and the, 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 uh, the point of really grasping it and believing it may be just a little bit different. Mm -hmm. Because I believe it. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because I, I, I believe it. So he says, uh, he is not here for he has risen just as he said. Come see the place where he, W-A-S, was lying. Amen. Can you imagine? I saw you put him in there. I knew, I know he's there. That's why we're here. We're not here to see an empty tomb because we didn't believe that. We're here to actually see the body. They're actually there to see the body. Amen? And, and, and then he says, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead, and behold, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Now, this, this, this whole thing is beginning to take place and these women are having to grasp this whole situation. First, the fact that there, there's an angel there. You have to get past that, right? You have, to, you, have to, you have to try to take that in. Then the angel is actually speaking to you, telling you the things that Jesus said. You have, to, you have to try to grasp the language that he's speaking to you and, 
and, and hold on to the understanding of actually what's being said. We're talking about a dead man who, I, who they seen die, basically, now being alive. Amen. Now being alive. Mm. Said he's not here, he is risen. <laughs> he's been resurrected. Therefore, resurrection day. He spoke of this third day. Mm -hmm. And as the third day is now here, everything that he said is coming to pass. It's like, do you believe me now? Seeing to them was actually believing. Mm -hmm. Seeing was actually believing. And they can, they can now go with confidence mm -hmm. in seeing and knowing that Jesus is not there. Man. The tomb is empty. And, and it is amazing that it, the, the story is told that it was a borrowed tomb because Jesus wasn't going to need it but a few days. Come on, Amen. Amen. He, he wasn't going to need it for, forever. Like when once we go to our grave, we're, we're there Amen. until basically the, the resurrection day, the day that, that Jesus come back to get us. Amen. But, but, but he, he was only going to need it for a little while. So therefore, he didn't need to keep it. It was just borrowed. Amen? Amen. 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 So it was just borrowed. And it says, and they, they departed quickly from the tomb which, with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples. So they still, they still left with fear, even though the angel said, do not be afraid. Just because somebody tells you not to be afraid, does that take away your fear? No. It, it doesn't. Because the, the, the humanity that we actually have, these emotional emotions that we have are real. Man. Whether, we, whether they're, they're, uh, they're, they're what they're supposed to be at the particular time, they're still real. So... They're moving in fear and great joy. They're, they're fearful, but they see something that, that, that now seemed impossible, but is possible. Because he wasn't there. Because it, they went there looking for him, but he wasn't there. And they departed quickly from the tomb with, with fear and great joy and ran to report it to his disciples, moving in obedience. Amen? Amen. Just, just like the, the angel had spoken to them to do. They, they left and they went to tell the disciples what had happened. Mm -hmm. This is what we would call a miracle. Amen. It, it, you know, we, we call different things miracles today that's not really miracles. But to, to just even imagine seeing this particular scene and, and what these women are actually going through at this particular time was amazing. It was uncommon. It was not natural. Amen? It wasn't something that you see every day. Right, right. Amen? Amen. So you wouldn't say that it's a, it's a miracle that Jeremiah came out with a new Corvette. And it looks amazing. That wouldn't be a miracle. It would just be a car with a different body style. And it would be something that maybe in your driving that you would see every day. Because after one is built, another one's built, and for long, one is sold, and for long, thousands are sold. And you see them everywhere. It's not a miracle. Jesus rising from the dead was a miracle. It was something that, that almost unexplainable. And then it says in verse 9, And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them, and they came up and took hold of him, of his feet, and worshipped him. Right off the bat, when Jesus came, they knew who he was. 
What, what are the signs that you know who Jesus is apart from everybody else? There was two other people that was crucified with him. It was never spoken of that those two guys actually came back out the grave. So on that particular day, if they had been nailed to the cross very similar to Jesus, it wasn't one of them. It was no mistaken of who it was. And it says, and they took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, do not be afraid and take word to my brethren to leave for Galilee and there they shall see me. Mm. It was an appointed time that Jesus was going to call the disciples together to be able to see him. Because one thing, again, as the word is showing that seeing is believing. Unless they seen the empty tomb, they, they probably wasn't going to believe it. Unless they seen Jesus with them, they, they weren't going to believe it. it. It wasn't going to be true to them unless they really seen it. It says, now while they were on their way, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and council together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers and said, you are, you are to say his disciples came by night and stole him away while we were asleep. And if this uh, should come to the governor's ear, we will win him over and keep you out of trouble. And they took the money and did as they had been instructed. And this story was widely spread among the Jews and is to this day. Mm -hmm. So you look at this and you see that a bribery was about to take place. Mm -hmm. The soldiers were expressing what they had seen. The people in charge were saying, you've seen this, but here's some money. You didn't see that. This is not what you this is not what you've seen. What you've seen is not what you've seen. What you've seen is what we're going to tell you to tell everybody you've seen. Right? So in, in order to do this, they said that they're gonna they're gonna win over the governor, they're gonna talk to the governor, make sure that you won't be in trouble. Because it was a penalty of death for the soldiers to fall asleep while on guard. So somebody was gonna have to talk to somebody to keep them from being put to death. So it was, it was a lot at play here. There was a lot going on for the, 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 the soldiers to, again, be able to deceive the people. So what they actually really wanted was for Jesus to disappear. It, they killed him, and he still didn't disappear. So now he was dead, and now he's alive again. How do we combat this? How do we get control of this situation? They're going to believe even more now that, that he's, he, he's back than when he was here before. So let's do this. Let's, let's move. Let's take this story and make it true. It was just amazing how easily they were, they were moved away from what they actually saw to a story that is fabricated mm -hmm. to make it seem as it was. Mm -hmm. So as you think about it, the story that they wanted to give was that the, the disciples stole the body of Jesus and by stealing the body they were going to say that the tomb was empty and that he is risen. Mm -hmm. Now if you remember, while they were out to get Jesus, all of the disciples scattered. That means that they were afraid for their own lives. They wasn't really about doing any, any heroic task like this. Like coming back to the, the grave to steal a body while guards watched. They were basically hiding from them. Remember Peter? He was denying him three times. 
that he didn't know him. I don't know this man. I, don't, I do not know this man. They didn't want to have any part of this because they didn't want to get in any more trouble than what they already were. So go and sneak in while the guards were asleep and steal the body. It, 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 it wasn't all adding up. But that's what was put out and that was what they were wanting the people to believe. Just like today, you have the news that comes on and they report on a story and they give you the portion that they want you to hear. If you, know, if you notice that when they're interviewing people, they only give you a snippet of what was actually going on for that situation. And most of the time they find the most unlikely person to interview. The person that just wasn't quite ready for TV, right? That, that's who they seem to find and talk to. Just like today, they only show you a portion or they tell you enough for you to, to, to believe without giving you the whole story. The only thing is now that even when you, when you look now, they, they can say that if you want the rest of the story, you can go to our website and read it, basically, right? They, they, they tell you something like that. So you have, you have this, this, this scenario now where the guards have been paid off to tell the public that something happened that didn't happen. It was really exciting news to those who believed. It was really exciting news to those who worshiped him. It should be exciting news for us today, even as we renew our thought and our perceptions of Resurrection Day. It should be good news to us that on the third day, when they went looking for him, he wasn't there. He wasn't in the empty tomb. That's good news for those of us who believe, right? Amen. Amen. So it says in the 16th verse, but, but the 11 disciples proceeded to Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had designated. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some were doubtful. You always got some. Amen? Amen. You ever, you ever reviewed a product before you went to buy it? And when you reviewed a product, you have 67 people that gave it a five. You have three people that gave it a four. And you have a couple people to give it threes. Maybe 10 people gave it a two. And then you always have that one. That one that didn't like the product, said it was too hard to put together. It just didn't work. I sent it back to give me a refund and the, the customer service was, was horrible. And you're only getting that one side. So when you, when you look at that and you see that 67 people like this thing, and it was only a few people uh, uh, that, that said it was okay or it was all right, and then you get down and you find out it was only one person that had a bad experience with this product. And there we are believing the one person. <laughs> what about these 67? We're believing the one. That's, that's how our humanity be, begin to work. It's, it's, that's how it seems like it, it is. Now it was on this third day, all of these things were supposed to happen about Jesus being risen from the dead, about them seeing the empty tomb, about the disciples being notified of what was there. And as you read through the different four gospels, the the different uh, uh, information is given, but 
We look at this again, and it says in the verse 17, And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some were doubtful. And, and Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Amen. When that statement is read, that's saying something more than just words. Yeah. More than just he was he he has risen. He didn't just get up to get up. Amen. He, he didn't just uh, uh, leave the tomb empty for it to be empty. He didn't just make an appearance for appearance sake. It was all for a purpose. And he said, "All authority has been given to me in heaven." And on earth. So now he's saying that he's over everything. He's, he's over the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. He's over the guards that was telling the lies. He's over Satan. He's over everything now. Because he says heaven and earth. But who is he speaking to? Everybody... Uh, is not there. Just those people who believe and worship him. Those are the ones that are there. So is the Pharisees and the Sadducees going to believe that he has all authority and all power over everything? <coughs> they're not there. They, they're, not, they're, they're not particularly going to believe what Jesus is saying now because they're not hearing it. And even hearing, they're, they're not going to believe. But those that are with him are believing and accepting everything that is going on. And he says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I command you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Mm -hmm. Now Jesus gave them a message that they were going to have to send out. Jesus was giving them a message that Everybody didn't hear. Everybody didn't believe. He said it. We, we, uh, we already hear that there's some is, that are, are doubtful. But just because the message is going out, everybody won't believe it. But do you know who's going to believe it? No. That's why you have to tell anybody that will hear. Because you don't know the ones that's going to believe and those that are going to be doubtful about this third day. About all of this authority and all of this power being put into the hands of, of, of Jesus. But it's, most of all, it's going to be about what you believe. Come on. Come on. on this third day, you're going to have to believe that something miraculous took place, something that, that's basically away from your understanding, but not away from your belief. We don't always have to understand to believe. That's where our trust comes in. But if we trust and believe and, 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 and then it, it says go therefore and make disciples. Why do you go and make disciples? Not just to make disciples. It says of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I get to this verse and it says teaching them to observe all that I command you. So when we get to that particular part, we have to understand that the Pharisees and the Sadducees have messed up the commandments over the years. And Jesus was here to set things straight. So now he's saying that what I want these disciples to believe is what I have said. Not what the religious leaders have said. Not the words that are being spread out by the gods and the other people, but by everything that I command. Why? Because he says that all authority has been given to him uh, in heaven and on earth. Because he has all authority. He has this. And he says, teach them to observe all that I command you. And he said, Lo, I am with you always <clears throat> until the end of the age. So even though he was with them then, he's with them now. He's with Amen. us now. If we have Amen. taken on the role of discipleship, Jesus is with us now. now. 
So he's not going to go away if we are those who have taken up the role of disciple. What do the disciples, what do they do? He says in, in verse 17 again, and when they saw him, they worshiped him. That's what his disciples do. Not some other little G-O-D. Not, not, not some material things. Not some future events that, that we think might happen. But as disciples, we, have, we, we are to be taught about to observe all the things that he commands us. All the things that Christ has for us now are the things that we're supposed to be about. But there are so many distractions that are taking us away from what we're supposed to believe. One of them is even perpetrated today about Easter. The rabbit, the bunny, right? The, the candy, the commercials, the, the different things that are taking us away from the truth of what actually happened on that third day. Amen. We're being deceived. And we're falling for it. Hook, line, and sinker. Let us keep focus on the truth. Not on what people are saying, but on what Jesus has commanded us. Amen. It was He's commanded us for a reason. He spoke to only the few people that, that knew about him and worshipped him for a reason. And those people were to go and make disciples in other places. Where? All the nations. So it wasn't just going to be Israel anymore. He's inviting other people in now. He said, all nations. You know one of the reasons that he says all nations? You have to go back to the Old Testament and get the understanding that when the ten tribes of Israel were exiled, they went in all different places. And then when the uh, kingdom of Judah was exiled, they went into other nations. So in order for them to actually understand and know, you have to go to all nations and make disciples. Because that's where they are now. Not just in Israel, but in different nations. And we have the task as disciples to pass on the word. Not to be subjective to the things that we hear, the things that are put in our ear by other people, but to only be moved by the commandments that have been set forth by Jesus. Those are the things that we're supposed to be about as disciples of Christ. Amen. So the third day was an important day. The empty tomb was, a, was an important sight. Meeting him in Galilee was an important time. It was very important that these things actually took place because they give us a, a, a testimony that the, to, the tomb was actually empty. When it began to speak of the people that saw him alive, mm -hmm. when it began to talk about all the things that he said before he ascended, mm -hmm. it was very important for us to know these things. And it's important for us to know that there were some that were doubtful. Everybody's not going to believe. Don't, don't, don't be dismayed when, when you're trying to get a point over and, and they're, they're not getting it. It's okay. They're either never going to get it or they're going to get it later. Sometimes all we have to do is plant the seed and then somebody else will come along and water it. And it's not for us to be dismayed. Because there, there were some doubtful then, it's gonna, and, and truly, there is people that are doubtful now. There's so many people that are doubtful now. 
There's so many people now that are not listening to the commandments. Even, even here in the church, we change things around from how the commandments of Jesus has went out. And we're, we started to listen to the voice of men. And we've gotten away from the word of God. And when we do that, we become doubtful. We don't give the true recognition to the third day that we need to. We don't understand that if Jesus did not come out the grave, if he's not risen, we are most pitiful people. Because we're believing in an untrue story. Just like, just, like, just, just like the people that believe uh, what the God said. If he, if he was not risen from the grave, we're a, a most pitied people. Because we're believing a lie. That's why the testimonies that are given here in the different gospels of how many people saw him alive and how the, the events that took place were so different from any other time. And how scripture was, was uh, prophecy was fulfilled. And we'd have to go back through all those different things to see and, and, and know. E even Jesus, was, was, as he was going along, he was, he was telling them sometimes that the, the blind have sight, the, the lame walk, the deaf they, they hear. And those are the things that were prophesied that would happen when he came. Because it didn't happen any other time. Then Isaiah 53 began to talk about the, the suffering, everything that it took to him to get to this particular place for the third day to actually happen. Mm -hmm. Jesus was telling his disciples, this must happen. This has to happen. We don't like bad news. We, don't, we get the news somebody died and we go, oh, really? You know, we don't, we don't really want that to happen. But in the case of Jesus, it had to happen. It was a must happen for us to even be here today. Amen. Otherwise, we're just most pitied people. <laughs> you know, that kind of person. But since he did rise, we rejoice and we praise him and we do like the, his disciples. We worship him because he's worthy of all praise. He's worthy of all honor. He's worthy of all glory. He's worthy of all people to come and lift up his name because he's great. He has a name like no other name. Yeah. We, he's worthy of all our praise. Yeah. He's worthy of all our praise. Yeah. He's worthy. Yeah. He's worthy. Yeah. He's worthy. Yeah. He's our risen Savior. Yeah. And he's worthy of all our worship. All our praise. Oh. All the teaching and everything that it takes place. He's worthy of everything that we give to him. Oh. He's worthy and more. Yes. Today we lift up the name of Jesus. Lift it up. Because he's risen. Yes. He's not dead. Yes. He's not here. Yes. He's, he's not here. In the empty yes. tomb. Yes. So therefore we should not go seeking him. Yes. In an empty tomb. We should be seeking him with our whole heart, knowing that he's alive. And as, as he, he, he told the disciples, he said, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. I couldn't be with you if I was dead. I am only with you because I'm alive. I'm alive. Praise the Lord. He's alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Alive. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 We thank God for each and every one of you. We pray that God will continue to bless and keep you. We pray that you will be amongst those who are yes. believers and not those who are doubtful. Amen. And if there's any doubt today, that it will be moved away. That you will continue to trust in a risen Savior. Not a dead one but a risen Savior. Yes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God bless you and keep you. If you'd like to give to our ministry, there is a link on our page. I pray that you would have a happy, happy resurrection day. God bless you.
Praise the Lord.